Well, hi everybody. So today I'll be going over, or going through, Iris Simulations PC-21. We'll do all the normal stuff, we'll have a look at it, we'll look around the outside, we'll have a look at the cockpit, we'll run through some of the features, start it up, take it off, land it, and all that good stuff. And then do a short review on it, so I'm pretty much going to let this kind of spin around for a second, because I do think this thing looks pretty good. And then we'll get started. Alrighty. Well, here we are in the cockpit. It looks really quite good in here. There may be a few spots that aren't perfect, but other than that, overall, it looks quite fantastic in here. The slight exception to that might be the mirrors up here. But in all honesty, I have never seen mirrors in Microsoft Flight Simulator that look all that good. I will say that the ones in the back, for whatever reason, look a little bit better. Better. They don't have this sort of weird black line that pops up on them as you rotate the camera. But, all in all, it's a pretty great looking plane in here. It looks incredibly clean, like it's brand new. And pretty much the whole plane itself looks like it's brand new. Alrighty, well, we'll go ahead and run through some of the features here real quick. First thing we need to do is flip on the battery. That'll bring up this display over here on the right. We need to come down here to the instructor page and click on this, and that'll bring up this page here. This is where all the features for the plane are going to be contained. It's where you're going to set up the smoke and a couple other things. I am going to go over the smoke, but I'm going to go over that last. So we'll start out here with AI Start. This is pretty much just quick start for the plane. Just need to turn the battery on, come to this page, and click this button here. We'll go ahead and start the plane up for you. Other thing we're going to talk about is the HUD. By default, the F-18 HUD is the default HUD for this plane, so we can swap it out to the PC-21 HUD. Now, I kind of prefer the PC-21 HUD. It has, like, two small downsides to it. One, you probably will have to put it into DLAA to actually be able to read it. At least I did. The other thing is not something I'm going to discuss in here. I'm going to go ahead and discuss it in the review. We'll come over here to page two. Page two is pretty much just visual things, so chalks, covers for the plane. You can hide or show the pilot. Then we'll come back here to page one. And we'll go ahead and set up the smoke. So the first thing we'll need to do is come up here to the weight menu. We will need to remove the fuel from external one and two. When we do that, this will say ESG not fitted. We need to go ahead and click on this, and it'll say smoke both. What it's done is put a smoke canister out on each wing. We can click it again, it'll say smoke left or smoke right. All this is going to do is restrict the smoke to whichever wing you have selected. We can click it again, and it'll say smoke exhaust, and what this has done is remove the canisters from the wings, and the smoke will come out of the exhaust. Before we can actually turn the smoke on, there are two things to do here real quick. One is to come down here, kind of behind the temperature controls, and actually arm the smoke. The other one is that you will have had to map something to toggle logo lights to actually activate the smoke. But once you've done that, pretty much good to go. You just gotta arm it and press whatever button you, are, you mapped it to and the smoke will show up. Now you can set this up from the air. You can set this up from anywhere. The plane doesn't have to be off or anything like that and the smoke is unlimited. So it's kinda nice that way. And that's pretty much it here for the smoke and the features. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started. Alrighty, well the first thing we need to do here is we need to go ahead and pull this pin out so we can close the canopy. This plane will not start unless you've closed the canopy. Now there don't seem to be any sounds associated either with it closing or it locking, but I don't know that that's really that big of a deal. Come over here to the right side of the cockpit, we'll go ahead and turn battery 1 and 2 on, generator 1 and 2 on. We'll go ahead and turn on the HUD and multifunction displays. They take about a minute to boot up, so as long as we're over here, we're going to go ahead and turn all those things on. We'll go over here to the left side of the cockpit. We need to go ahead and flip the starter on, flip the ignition on. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to press this little switch here. This will move the throttle into idle and unlock it for you. Now while this thing kind of finishes warming up, you're probably going to run into a few warnings. One of which is going to be the oxygen warning. So the way you clear that is we just need to come back here behind the flaps lever and flip that switch on. That'll clear that warning. And the other one you're probably going to run into is for the ejection seat, so we just need to click here kind of in front of the seat, pull this little pin out, 
which has kind of a nice little animation to it. And that'll clear that warning. Now, if you've done both of those things and you still have these warnings, that is because you have not done them for the rear seat. So you can get rid of that in two ways. You can either hop back there and flip that switch and pull the pin, or you can come in here to the instructor page, go over to next. You can just go ahead and hide the instructor here, and then it will clear those warnings and you won't have to worry about it. So we're pretty much good to go, so we're going to go ahead and head out here to the runway and take this thing off. Alrighty. Well, we're going to take off from the grass today because I tried to take off from the runway a second ago and those 20 mile an hour crosswind, I honestly couldn't even keep it on the runway. So we're going to take off here from the grass because the wind's coming down the south, and this way I don't have to deal with that. I guess I could just turn live weather off, but where would be the fun of that? Alrighty. So... As far as how this thing taxis, it taxis pretty well. There's not really too much to worry about. It does get going kind of quick. You probably will have to manage the brakes a little bit to maintain your speed. You might not want to get it going too fast in a turn. It, it doesn't turn very well if it's going too fast on the ground. But other than that, it's pretty fine to drive around. So we'll come up here. There's one thing I want to talk about real quick, which is in the weight menu, and it's the CG. Now, by default, the CG is not in its correct position. I already did this once, so I moved it. So it should be up here at about 25%. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in the air. I would say that if you're probably just going to fly this thing from point A to point B, it's probably not going to affect you that much. I honestly don't notice it affecting that much in this plane. But I will get into that a little bit more when we actually get off the ground here. So we'll go ahead and just throttle up here and get rolling. I probably won't have to worry about too much, too much on your rudder at least to kind of keep this thing straight. It's a pretty well-behaved little plane. Uh, crosswinds are apparently killer, though. So about 90 knots here, we will go ahead and begin pulling back on the stick, and we should lift off somewhere around about 100, 105, maybe 110. Go ahead and put the gear up. Now, I don't really find it necessary to put the flaps down for takeoff. Unless maybe it's a really short runway or something like that. It pretty easily gets off the ground without using flaps for takeoff. But if you want to, you can. Now, as far as how this thing flies, I actually quite like flying it. It's a pretty easy thing to kind of just hop in and, and go fly around. It has a pretty, pretty easy learning curve. It rolls pretty well. It climbs pretty well. It turns an okay circle. It's not the tightest circle I've ever seen. And it does bleed speed off pretty bad, oddly enough, in the circle, but it doesn't seem to bleed speed very much anywhere else. So if you're if you're turning a circle, it's going to bleed speed pretty bad, but other than that, it, it doesn't bleed speed very bad. It, it really does actually climb pretty well. So the only thing I will say is that when you are making that turn, you're going to be bleed that speed, and you will not recover it very quickly, so kind of keep that in mind. Now, as far as how it stalls, it has... I don't know, I guess it's an okay stall. It's pretty difficult to get it to spin. At least I've had a pretty difficult time actually getting it to spin. Now, there have been a couple of times where I basically spun down to the ground, and I think that is because it was out of CG. So if you're going to do any kind of aerobatics or stunt flying or anything like that with this thing, it probably is a good idea to go ahead and set the CG up properly. But again, if you're going to just fly it from point A to point B, it's probably not really that big of a deal. I honestly don't notice it that much in terms of, of doing stunts, that it affects anything. It just seemed like that could only really be the, the reason for that really weird stall, because the, the way it was like oscillating around didn't make any sense to me. But, either way. Now, as far as its speed and kind of everything else, you're probably going to get like 380, 380 knots out of it, maybe. Somewhere around there. It is reasonably fast. It's not the fastest thing ever, but it's not also not very slow. It's pretty difficult to actually break it. You can take it up to about 8 G's. I, I don't really run into it, uh, anything that I've done really that, that breaks it. The exception of that might be going really fast and turning really hard. But even there, it, it doesn't seem to really break the plane. So it, it, it's a pretty tough little, little plane here. It does come with an air brake, which is kind of nice. So if you am pretty sure it's tied to uh, toggle spoilers or something like that. And other than that, not much else to this plane. It's quite a fun little one to fly, though. So I'm going to see y'all back here when I kind of get lined up here for, for landing, and I'll see y'all back here in a second. No, 
Alrighty, we'll go ahead and put the gear and the flaps down. Now there do not there does not seem to be any restriction on what speed you can either put the flaps down or put the gear down. They don't seem to create too much drag on the plane, if any really at all. It's pretty easy to keep your speed up. Or as long as you have the throttle somewhere around like maybe fifty or sixty percent. Oh, my air brake out. Now, the other thing I will mention about this plane that I forgot to mention a second ago is it, aside from the fact that it does get batted around kind of bad in the wind, which is not really a complaint because these are 20 mile an hour winds, but either way, it does get kind of get batted around in the wind. It does get a little shaky when you get close to the ground, even if it's not really windy. But. Other than that, it's not bad. So we really wanted to come in here closer to about 130 knots, but we're, we're doing okay right about now. Go ahead, go ahead and reduce the throttle here. Hope it don't hit that building. And we should set down and sit down here around about high 80s, low 90s. And then we'll just get on the brakes. It has okay brakes. They're not the, they're not gonna stop you on a dime but they do work pretty well. So that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and go into the review here, and that'll be it for today. Well, the Iris PC-21 can be purchased at irissimulations.com or from Orbix Direct. It rounds out to about $23. The short version of the review is, I like it. It's a pretty fun little thing to fly. It looks really good. It sounds good. If you like flying like five feet off the ground, this is a great one for that. The exterior model is great. The only gap I noticed was on the frame of the canopy. Other than that, all the seams seem to line up really well. The textures on the exterior are again great. The, the liveries line up really nice. The only downside might be that the tires look a little plasticky. There are a few lower quality textures kind of dispersed around the plane, but I had to really look for them to find them. Also, I do spend some time in the drone camera just kind of looking for problems. Probably won't notice them if you're in the exterior camera, except for maybe the tires. Either way, I don't think that Anything I've just mentioned would really detract from the price. The interior model and textures are basically the same as the exterior. Again, the lower quality textures are for the most part out of sight. They're just some little things like screw heads and upholstery stitching that don't look all that great, but again, for the most part, they're out of sight. The HUD still suffers from the Microsoft Flight Simulator problem. The PC-21 HUD has a slight problem that if you lean to the left or the right, you'll notice the HUD isn't really on the glass. It almost appears to be on the front of the canopy. The only reason I bring this up is that there is a note in the manual about Iris working on a, on a fix for this. So it may get fixed, it, maybe it doesn't, but they are working on it. And if this is something that bothers you, just switch to the F-18 HUD, it doesn't have the same problem. The multifunction displays look great, and they're easy to read. The text can get a little bit blurry, but that gets fixed as long as the graphics settings are, are set to DLAA. In terms of the flight model and systems, this isn't intended to be, I guess, the term would be study level. Remember, this is only about $23. There are some things that do and don't work. There isn't any kind of engine damage or anything like that to worry about. The flight model is certainly a lot of fun to fly in terms of its behavior, and it's got a really nice roll rate, not impressively fast, but it's by no means slow. It climbs well, it turns well. It's not the fastest thing, but in level of flight, it seems to be anywhere from about 375 to 385. But I did have it sitting up close to about 400 sometimes. It is incredibly hard to break the plane. It's fairly forgiving. It's easy to kind of just pick up and fly. The only thing that I'm a little iffy on is the stall characteristic. Either way, I have had a lot of fun testing it out and flying it around. The sounds are pretty good. Some of the switches might be a little bit generic, but they are just switches. The engine sounds are pretty good. I don't know what a PC-21 sounds like from inside the cockpit, but the sounds seem like they are a custom sound set and not a generic turboprop for the Microsoft Flight Simulator sound library. They do seem to have some missing sound effects, the opening and closing of the canopy and it locking. There may be a few others, but overall the sounds are pretty good. So the miscellaneous part of this is that the pilots look like they're custom made and depending upon the livery, the helmets match the livery. You get, I think, 12 liveries and irissimulations.com has links to some free bonus ones. The vortex and vapor trails appear to be custom made as well and they look pretty good. This is a bit of a side, but I did notice that when you use active pause, it does pause the smoke as well. Hadn't seen that before, so if you want to do some sky riding and take a picture of it, you can do that. The interior and exterior lighting is good. There may be a few other things that I've missed, but either way, the features and random things for this plane all come out really well. 
The conclusion here is that the PC-21 is certainly a lot of fun to fly. It looks great, the sounds are good, and it's not that expensive. Any of the problems that I have mentioned, I don't think detract from the price. I simply noticed them and thought I'd put them in here. But I'm certainly not disappointed with the plane, and again, I've had a lot of fun flying it. So that's pretty much going to be it for today, y'all. So thanks for watching, I hope I'll see you all next time. Feel free to watch the rest of this. If not, thanks again for watching.